and welcome to today's tutorial today we're going to be looking at user flows what is it all about and we're going to be creating a user flow right here in figma so let's get right into it so what when we say user flow what do you think we mean a user flow just simply refers to the pathway a user follows through a website a mobile application or any digital product to, to accomplish a particular task or goal it maps out the series of steps a user takes from the initial interaction with the product to the completion of the product let's say from point a to point b let's say a user you have a financial application and a user wants to let's say buy an airtime or make transfer on your application now to create a user flow for this particular action you have to define every single step the user takes from when the user gets to your app point a to the point the user sees a successful message maybe your, your transfer has been successful or the airtime you you bought has been credited right? this is what user flow is all about it is very essential to understand user flow because it helps us to optimize the user experience right of a digital product they help, they help us as designers they even help the developers and product managers to visualize the pathways users might take identify potential obstacles or pain points points of confusion and streamline the overall user journey so a typical user flow might include steps such as the initial landing on the home page like i told you earlier navigating navigating to a specific section or feature interacting with different elements such as button forms links etc completing a transaction with a tax or exiting or returning to another part of the product by analyzing user flows yes analyzing the flow the steps a user will take on your application designers we can make informed decision about layout navigation functionality and content placement to create a more intuitive and user-friendly experience user flows are often used in usability testing to identify areas for improvement and refine the product design based on real user feedback so before you create let's say wireframe or the high fidelity mockups you can actually create a user flows right to, to test it with reuser and say okay if these are the steps you would take to achieve a particular action or perform perform a particular action on a website do you consider this cumbersome do you think it's a good experience you can get feedback from users then use that feedback to go and modify your design all right so let's go right into figma and create a user flow right to create a user flow once you're on your dashboard here that's on this first page go to the draft section we're going to be using fig jam here to create this so i'm going to click on fig jam and i'm going to have all of this so you're going to get a lot of pop-up you can just close each of them or you can look at what they are saying you got, all right so what i'm going to do now is to title this let's say user flow i'm going to create a simple user flow for an onboarding journey a user's onboarding journey create a user story right we normally use different shapes and some connectors to say okay a user is starting from this point and is going to this point right then we connect this line to say yes so basically we use different shape this shape there are different shapes here we could change the shape to this change the shape to this and change the shape to this all right it all depends on the shape you you want to use for certain actions right but in creating user flows it's best to set some parameters or some some guidelines to guide the shapes that you're using i'm going to do that so generally the starting points i want to use this as a starting point this one this shape here this cycle shape here mostly in creating user story generally we use the cycle to define the starting point so i'm just going to click t here and i'm going to write cycle represents start and end here so i'm trying to set like a parameters uh, or a more like a guide so that anybody looking at my user flow understand what each shape represents right so i'm going to keep this here so for cycles wherever you see cycle in my user flow you're going to know that is 
the beginning or an end of an action let me duplicate this i'm just holding on to option or alt key and then i'm dragging out i'm going to also use diamonds diamond will represent decision or conditions so maybe if a user is presented with two options or it has to make a decision maybe a yes or a no so i'm going to use this shape here let me duplicate this and i'm going to say diamond here but again this will represent the colors so i'm going to use this color for start and end wherever you see diamond i'm going to be making use of this color so let me also duplicate this and say that rectangle so rectangle here when wherever you see me use a rectangle is going to represent a page maybe a user has been shown a success page after completing an action or a payment summary page anything at all so we say represent pages so i'm going to duplicate this change the shape to this and i'm going to be using blue as my pages here so the next thing again that we can put into consideration is when a user clicks um, to take an action so i'm going to say this right leaning i'm going to show you the shape shortly parallelogram program represents when an action has been taken so i'm going to drag this here put this this is what i'm referring to here this right leaning parallelogram i'm going to change it here but i'm going to also use a blue because it's a page maybe on the page an action was taken all right so let's create a simple onboarding or registration flow so first thing when a user comes to an application first thing the person sees is let's say plus screen but we're going to create the starting point i'm going to like this here so what i did is just to drag from here i'm just dragging this dragging this let's delete this one here delete this one here so if i drag this here i can decide to change the shape at any point if i click the drop down here or change the color at any point if i click the drop down on the colors so remember we say for our starting and ending we're going to be sticking to this color so if you zoom in you're going to see this item that says add test so if you click into it you're just going to type start now this is the first one i'm going to click on this arrow if you zoom in you need to zoom in to zoom in here i'm just holding on to my command for mac or control for windows and i am zooming in on my mouse in and out so if you click this arrow here you get another shape here but however you remember it's an onboarding screen right a, a user wants to register on your application i remember once the user want to start the process the first thing they see when they download your application is most likely like a splash screen to talk maybe your company's hello dreams right so it's just a screen like a page so i'm going to change it to a rectangle and also change the color to blue because we stated here that rectangle represent pages so i'm going to say splash screen so let's create another page so after a splash screen what do you think a user should see when they come to your app after a splash screen ideally we see the sign up page or login screen so i'm going to say sign up slash login so after that the user is definitely going to see another page that says so apart from that once the user sees the sign up or login page this is the user we have to perform an action right before the user is directed to maybe fill their details so performing an action remember we're using the shape so we're going to change it like this and still leave it as blue let's say user clicks create account or sign up click create accounts maybe click sign up so if the user clicks sign up what happens user imputes their details user imputes details so i'm not going to be like i'm not going to go very very granular to say because we're just putting this off the top of our head but like creating a scenario where a user gets to register 
on an application right so there might be other details if you are considering what you're building or your own application i'm just like giving you an instance and showing you how user flows or how to create a user flow works so after the sign up user gets to input their details right after inputting their details details could include maybe email phone number so what i did is just to drag this out this one is a, a note a sticky note so if maybe you don't want to write all the details the user is going to provide maybe you can use a sticky note to say email phone number um address right so you provide all the details here so that anybody looking at your user flow we know that these are the details the user imputes so after inputting their details normally the user gets, gets to create a password right user creates after inputting uh, after the step of create a password there could be another step to say verify email now or later so this can be a page right to say um verify email now or do this later verify email now so remember here a user has been presented with a decision which can be a yes or a no i remember we stated here that diamond represent decision or condition decision okay so decision or condition right so you know sometimes um some companies who want to streamline the onboarding or registration process and remove some some of this criteria so a user can verify their phone number first or verify email when they get into the application it all depends on the flow you the structure or the architecture in place for that company so the user we're going to change this to a diamond and we're also going to change the color to this so verify email now could have two options i'm going to say yes i'm going to take this here select this one again click this arrow again and say maybe no so if a user says no right the user sees the success screen so this page is going to be a rectangle because it's just a page and we're going to make it a blue so after the user sees the success screen now the onboarding process or the registration process is automatically has come to an end so let's go back and choose the shape that we chose to be our end now this is how to create a simple flow i'll suggest you try to come up with like criteria something that um, you can resonate with and that anybody looking at your user flow can easily understand but generally in this field we use the cycle as our start and end right and we use this rectangle for pages so you can do you just do something that anybody looking at we understand so thank you for watching today's tutorial if you found this helpful please subscribe to my youtube channel thank you